Welcome back to Teach Amanda Fish Channel. You've asked for it, so here it is. Your video on the status of our bees and beehives. Let's go ahead and get started. Living life every day, late at night, not okay. All I want and I pray, all I need are some better days. Cause all I want and I pray, I believe in the better. This hive is, this is the second season. And I do believe this hive might have swarmed this year. It was a particularly active swarm season this year, and I just so happened to hear this swarm across the street in my neighbor's house, moving in on his house. Unfortunately, it was in a location that I wasn't willing to go in and go after the hive, and I even lost a separate hive where I saw it go up and out and over and was unable to catch that one. But I look at it as paying things forward. This is year three for us. I believe it's year three with the first year assembling the hives, capturing some wild swarms. I've never paid for bees. And these first two hives, if you go watch that video, I got these through a state funded program. There's nothing in this hive to harvest, even though it's on year two, I did have a swarm earlier. I'm going to let this hive keep building and strengthening. It's a strong hive at this point. As it strengthens through the summer, there could potentially be a late summer harvest or what some people would call a second harvest. We'll keep an eye on it. But definitely by next year, if this hive remains this strong, it's a nice looking hive. Update, we did end up getting a phenomenal second harvest in August. And that's what this honey is that came out very golden colored versus the brownish color from the spring harvest. But it was a strong hive, produced well for us, and we kind of rocked it out in August. So now that we're in the back side of the hive here, the front side of the hive is where the, the queen lives and works and lays her brood. This is where we look for the back side, where we're looking for the bees to fill this up with stores so that's the strategy on this and the queen doesn't necessarily come back in here to lay this is the strongest hive i have it's also the oldest this dates all the way back to year one uh, i think i might have gotten a swarm out of this one we also did splits this year out of this hive because i could see the swarm coming and i was trying to head it off but i got three more hives out of two or each one of these, the three highs that I entered this season, each gave me a split. So I'm up to one, two, three, four, five, six hives now. I've got a friend who gave me the feedback and said that hives are basically a giant money pit. <laughs> you throw the bees in and then one day you come out and they're all gone. I'd have to say that can be true, and that's probably the experience of some of you out there, but that has not been my experience. Between the free hives that I got through the grant in Virginia, capturing my own wild bees out in my swarm traps, learning that process, and then learning the process of splitting hives, monitoring, checking for what stage the hive is in and responding to that, I'm now up to six hives and one more in the traps. I've reached a point where I actually don't want any more. Here you can see I've, I'm keeping a monitor on hive beetles. I don't know what that is in this oil trap. This has been clean all season. So a couple of weeks ago we were in I've got to figure out now, I see so one insect in there, but the theory is whatever it is crawls across the top. Actually, I see what it is now. It's ants. It's chocked full of ants. A roach is bad for the hive. Uh, generally hives have insects in them besides just bees and the bees, if it's a healthy, strong hive, kind of manage it themselves. You see roaches, uh, the, the beetles are the ones that are the, the really bad situation that you end up treating for. <coughs> yeah, that's... Well, what's good? That's what's supposed to be doing. 
So in this hive is where I have the most, where I can see the possibility of having a bar of honey ready to come out of this hive. We've already done a harvest out of this one earlier this spring, so this would be our second harvest out of this hive. And again, we're in the back side of the hive here. A little bit of bee bread. It's it's pretty heavily laden. A little bit of nectar, uh, and they're they're actually going into it in spots, pulling the caps off and pulling the honey out. So this is one that we're going to harvest. And we'll cut this lower portion off, save it, let the bees, we'll put this out in the bee yard. The bees will come out, they'll take this nectar and put it back into their hive. And then we'll keep all the capped. Bees are actually self-cleaning. When you get your leftovers, any honey that you spilled, nature lets nothing go to waste. They attack that, clean up the comb, take all those resources back to the hive. Also, we don't waste. After those bees are done cleaning it up, we give that wax a bit of a rinse in the sink. Then we set up our own little solar melter where the wax melts through the paper towels, drops out of the bottom. The slum gum, which is what that brown goo is that's left, is used in next year's swarm traps. And we're left with a pretty cool harvest of beeswax. Not sure what we're going to do with it yet, but that's the adventure. Come back for future videos and we'll decide what we do with this. If you're curious how we did that homemade solar melter, make a comment down below and we'll put it in the video production feed. And again, when you're rotating these top bars, you never side load. You can do all of the horizontal on the plane, all of that you want. You never go this way or this way because it'll break with all that weight. It's probably three or four pounds of honey in that so we'll let that sit right here and take a look at the next one nope we'll let that one keep rolling actually we might take that one let's see what's in this one and you'll notice where we talked about in the last hive with the queen staying up here in the front of the hive there's no brood in the back side of the hive here till we get to this. This is all brood. Not a lot of drones, that's nice. So I started this process during COVID and there were no clubs or associations meeting. The skills that I gained, you'd be amazed at the resources that are on there. There's some heavy hitters in the bee, bee community that are making videos and providing the information. Just about anything you want to know is out there to look at. It absolutely does help to have a mentor to talk to when you have these questions pop up, get the dialogue and feedback, but it's not a necessity. There's information out there and I wholeheartedly recommend that you take the dive and go after setting up your own hives. So we're always looking for the queen and lo and behold, there she is and she is unmarked. So she's new this year. And uh, I don't even remember how we ended up managing this one, but I am going to mark her. And that makes her much easier to find later on. Right there on her back, that's good enough. Not a cap brood. I'll tell you something else that not a lot of videos cover, and that's the activity in the garden. It was off the charts this year. I had a really successful harvest. I could see bees every time I turn around. While in one of my other gardening groups, people are posting about how they're not seeing any pollinators. It makes a difference if you invest in some bees on your property. So we've brushed all those bees off and we've actually left where the hive is because if we had this out, it would still be drawing those bees in to harvest this. What we're going to do is cut along all that open nectar, save that for the bees to come back and clean out, and then we'll cut all this capped honey out. And all of that cap goes into the bucket where we can put a lid back on it so the bees can't get back into it.
We'll give that back to the bees. That is a food grade bucket that we're using. Take that back in for our harvest. So those other two top bar hives that you looked at were the ones that the state sent to me. This style is actually one that I built and I'm doing something a little bit different than most top bar hives. I'm putting, I'm building one box and I'm putting a hive on each side of that box. So in theory, this was a, a split in theory, come winter time, I'm gonna have some more heat inside this box. They're living separate. Actually, this split came from this side. It was showing some swarm potential. So I did the split. I think I stopped the swarm on this side and put it in there and they've stayed separate. So this is, in theory is working. Two hives in one box. If you think I'm crazy for this setup, or I'm a little bit concerned about robbing... Oh my gosh. <laughs> please comment down below. Give me some criticisms, some critiques. No way. This is like the stuff that you see. Some things that you think I'm doing right. On like satisfying pages. <sighs> because this is a learning process. And it's like the channel says in everything that I do. Don't squash it the other way. Like this? Yeah. The person that tells you they know everything shows you that they don't know the first thing. That's awesome. Mmm. Tastes totally different than Totally different than store-bought. Mm. This is my latest upload, and over here is a playlist that you might just enjoy. I hope you liked it. If you did, please click like, subscribe, share, and come on back for more.